Ninja. I'm going to talk about a lot of things right now, and they are very, very important. And quite frankly, it's hard. Um, I'm going to talk about an interaction I just had with one of my fellow coworkers. And just so you guys know, if I have to race out here real quick, it's because I am on duty. I'll just hit the X button and run out the door and jump in the engine. I have went through something both in 2006 and in the last three years that not a lot of people have gone through. When I used to, when I talk about like my experiences in real estate and knowing and seeing the crash well ahead of time, not because I was prophetic, but because the crash actually happened in 2005, I was just following what Ben Bernanke was doing and uh, all the lies they were putting out on the country. And then people that were lying to themselves, right? Um, it was hard. I lost a lot of friends. In 2020, actually, let's back up to 2019, I witnessed what happened, what came out of when the COVID thing started out of, uh, um, sorry, it's gonna be hard to say, uh, when it came out of Wuhan, and then I started seeing all these China deniers and all the, the story, don't, you're not allowed to say it was out of China, like, we know it was out of China, we saw it, and it came out of a man-made, oh, it's not man-made, but it came out of a lab, and it's a bioweapon, and you couldn't say it, right? People that were getting taken down or shamed uh, on the internet for it you knew that this was a planned event. I literally teared up and had a very emotional, and it was loud, let's put it that way, in front of the fire department in January. It says, you guys have no idea. The things that I've been warning are now here, and your lives are about to change forever. Now, ironically, those same men that remember that day would say that they don't feel like things changed. They literally do not see the change. We're gonna to get to what's going on in China and Taiwan, and I'm gonna tell you something about a chip and, and people that I've already met in my life with it in their right hand, all right? Because see, the, the game, if played out slow enough, you never know what's happening. You are literally living in the boiling vat of water and it's getting warmer and warmer. Type one, if you believe that, this, that you're seeing that effect on people with just inflation. They're now just living with inflation. Oh, I guess it's here to stay. Oh, it sucks, but well, what are you gonna do? I just, and they have no idea that what's happening is a plan to absolutely destroy your mind with the ESG stuff. And by the way, that video that went out, you did exactly what I said, asked, and I thank you so much. For every two views, one person hit the thumbs up. I have never, that video is sitting right now at like, or as of last night, 50,000 views with 25,000 thumbs up. The algorithm is not sharing it. They do not want this information out. And like I've said before, so many people ask me with the success I've found in my life, praise God, thank you, Lord. And I really attribute most of that to tithing, honestly. And I have nothing to gain from sharing that testimony with you. But um, it is true what it says in the Bible that you reap what you sow, right? They would say, why are you still working? I said, because this could all be ripped out tomorrow. Because the more you know, the more you have to share. You have an obligation to share the truth. If you do not, you will perish. You will get sick. You will die early because, and, and God will honestly give that mantle to somebody else. You have to share the truth. And so as I share more of this truth and I learn more about the algorithms and I learn more about the media in this world, it hurts. The truth does hurt. And I'm always trying to find this fancy, interesting way to get around and circumvent this to get the word out to the masses. Because truly, this plan that the elite have, and they don't give a crap about what country they grew up in. They're elitist. They're globalist. They just move. You are a pawn. Countries are pawns. Hey, we did something. Well, it caused a riot and people died. They, I don't care. These, these are peasants. Think back to what it was like for kings and lords and serfs. The kings always allowed their family and their, uh, their subjects, the ones that were faithful to them, to live in a guarded fortress. And all of the peasants and serfs lived outside to do their bidding, to make them even more money. And that's what you have now. You have the lords being the Rothschilds and those families, and then you've got the, the uh, 
the you know the kings or those those families, and then you have the lords, which are the CEOs of these big companies, and then you have all of us just running around the serfs. And the only way, and it's going to have to be a spiritual awakening. And I'm going to tell you about a conversation I had this morning with one of my firefighters. It is going to have to be a spiritual awakening. Now, what is true is it says in the Bible, and guys, I'm not here to preach to you because I am the worst example of a, a good person. Every day I fall on my face and I'm asking God for forgiveness or my wife for forgiveness or my kids for forgiveness or friends for forgiveness. I'm constantly trying to get better. But it never took a perfect person to lead, just so you know. And so I want to encourage some of you with that. I was talking to a man today and I said, I, I want you to understand that this global domination is going to come through money. It is the most evil and powerful tool on earth, money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, the love of money. And we saw churches lose their faith. They, they lost their faith over who the great physician was, and they ran to a shot. The, they lost faith uh, because they ran to money. Hospitals, doctors knew that if they diagnosed somebody with COVID, they would get a big fat, fat check. I know somebody that runs a hospital. I know this to be absolutely true. And they were excited. People were forced in their homes, but if they were given just a little bit of money, you are now just purchased for a price. You have an acquisition cost. And the facts are, right now, there's a computer reading and analyzing everything that I say, and it won't go out. If I would be doing this topic right now, if I hit stop, I had the exact same title, and I, I probably should do it right now, because right now we have 539 people on. If I hit stop, started over again with the exact same title, and started talking straight about Taiwan uh, being evacuated by the U.S. of American citizens, because that's the story they want to push today, because they want you to fear, they want you to get on board with the American war machine, because we've got to go to war, because China is overthrowing our economy. China, Russia, and India, like literally more than half the world is throwing over, overthrowing our economy. And you may be fooled by these government numbers talking about GDP, but it's just like the term recession. They just changed what GDP means. Oh man, we're more in debt than these other countries, which means now we have more of a GDP. And it would get, that video would probably already have about 1,500 people on right now. This is not a theory. This is how it really works. After 3,000 videos in three years, that's how many I've done, I put out as much content as I can. I said I wanted to be the hardest working person here. I will outwork everyone. If I've got a message, God's going to get it out. But only certain people can hear that message. So when I talked to somebody this morning, it was a young man that actually has ears and he questions. That's the number one sign that somebody has ears to hear is that they question. They listen and then they question. They go deeper or they challenge you. And I was talking to him about an RFID implant chip that's going in your right hand, your forehead. And I talked to him about how I used to go around churches in 2010 and warn them and nobody looked at me. They looked at me like I was crazy and they laughed at me. And then I would show them commercials uh, IBM put out and other companies. And they're like, oh my gosh, is this coming out soon? I said, no, they've been running since year 2000. Then I would show them the ceremonial chipping of someone that it would happen on like USA Today or Good Morning America every year, it'd switch over where they would have somebody literally uh, chipped in the right hand um, uh, on live TV. And it was a ceremonial thing. And then I would, they would just be like melting down. Oh my gosh, this is beside, they're beside themselves. And they said, how long has this been going on? I'm like, well, that video is from 2003. And they would just be shocked. Over 2 million people, I believe, is the number right now that currently have a, an RFID chip in their right hand. Um, it unlocks doors. It opens up computer systems, very secure. Uh, it's a slow roll process. And this banking collapse uh, that is being done on purpose, which is going to scare you into this. Now, so many people, just so you know, so many people back then would tell me, I'm never getting it. You know, every single one of those people got the shot. I have a friend that I'm going to help out. He's an ex-business partner of mine, uh, a broker in one of my mortgage, uh, uh, not my mortgage company, but um, my, sorry, uh, real estate uh, property management company. And he was fired from LA City Fire. Now, not officially, but he was the one that went after them. And he stood his ground. I mean, he was my friend. He saw everything I was going through. Um, for 10 years prior, he used to 
he would listen, but he'd roll his eyes when I'd talk. And he came to me one day and he says, if I would have listened to you, I'd have been rich right now. And, I, and, and it's a hard thing because I know it was true. You know, everything from Bitcoin, all this stuff, it's happening just like you said. Ultimately, he stood up and he lost his job. He tried to fight for 800 people and it ended up being him and I think eight or nine people that they're trying to fire him. And now he's doing a company that I think is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to try and bring him onto the channel and help people because it's really cool what he does. And I'm going to get to this other stuff here um, because I'm going to talk about something that's in Walmart that nobody really knows about, okay? Um, but he uh, has a company that goes around and has uh, agreements with contractors in a city, let's say, that gets ravaged by all the time by hurricanes or tornadoes and stuff like that, um, and floods. And then what happens is you get signed up with him, and what he does, he's the immediate uh, uh, deal between the contractor and you. And within 48 hours, there's a guarantee that there are people here working for a pre-designated rate or whatever, and the insurance company's got to pay him. And so, like for your business, he signs up businesses. And it's just like, it's, it costs nothing to sign up. But then when a disaster strikes, you call him and he goes, yep, contractors are on their way. This guy, this guy, this guy, and, and the contractors, and it just streamlines. And then the contractors have immediate work and it behooves them to do it this way because it, it, they are not missing a couple weeks worth of work while they're trying to find people. And it's just, it's incredible. And I wanna help him, right? So we're gonna start doing some storm tracking just to help him because he stood up and fought the good fight and he's still trying to fight for his job back. Even after it's all like, okay, you don't have to get it anymore. But you guys are still fired because that was bravery. That was bravery to give up everything. Say, you're going to give up everything because of your, your rights and your, your beliefs. But, um, and yeah, you don't have to get it anymore. But you know what? It's, you're not going to get your job back. So I want to help him. So this, this chip thing, and, and I want you to understand, everything that we're talking about, and, and you know what? Let me, let me change topic again because this pers person's probably listening, and I'm not offended at all, but person said something about me one day and they said something about, you know, some of my, um, I, I've made some boneheaded calls and I thought about it and I don't talk about, I've never talked about this, but I actually keep track of my calls to make sure that they're right on so that if they are not, I admit them. And I've, I've been pretty solid, pretty right on. Now I've been wrong before and I've done like one thing when I sold, said I sold a, a crypto um, and I missed out on like $7 million of, of revenue because it went up literally another $7 million, like literally 90 days later, it was theta. I, I, I sold that and I bought Digibyte. Well, I didn't tell anyone to go do it. I said, look, I wouldn't do it, but you know, I did it. And yeah, I missed out on an additional, you know, six or 7 million bucks. Um, yeah, that, that was a bummer. But my point being is that other than that, like with Jack from Nobody Special Finance, he sends me all this great stuff about the CMBS market. He goes, dude, you called it, you called it, and I'm helping you. I'm like, I'm already on to the next thing. I, I why, Many people just talk about, look, I was right, I was right. And I'm like, yeah, you want to build a baseline of, look, I, I was right about this, I was right about that, because I need you to listen about this, because this is going to hurt you. This is going to be to your detriment, right? For lack of better terms. And so this one person said, yeah, you made some boneheaded calls. So I, I texted the person and I said, hey, just curious, what were the boneheaded calls? And he goes, oh, not much. It was just, you know, your clickbait titles and your thumbnails. And I'm like, those aren't calls. That's my... Uh, and I haven't talked to the person yet, but I'm like, that, that wasn't a call. Um, if I use clickbait, which I use all the time, especially when I do, like today, I did four words because I'm going to talk about all of them. I've got I've to come up with a title that's for all of them, right? Um, and try and get people in to wake people up. Because faith comes by hearing. When you hear something like I'm telling you multiple times, and then you start to see it out in the world, you start to go, oh my gosh. And what happens to these scales that have been built up on your eyes and in your ears? I know it sounds crazy, but it's literally a spiritual thing. They start to fall off. And every one of us, type one, if you know what I mean, every one of us had a point, an epiphany, where we went, oh my gosh, I had no idea this is how the world worked. Like when it comes to like money printing or inflation, you're like, oh my God. And then what happens is once you admit that, I never knew this was possible. My life is now different forever. And, and like, well, here, let's get to that moment. Like somebody here, uh, Andrew saying all doom and gloom. These are morons. These are fools. These, like Andrew, you're an idiot. I'm going over news headlines. Like that ESG stuff that happened yesterday. People are like, you are so full of doom and gloom. And I'm like, you're an idiot wake up. I hope that I piss you off enough so that you go and try and prove me wrong. And I'm going to get to this story about this young man today, the firefighter, and what happened because his mouth just dropped because he challenged me. And I showed him the truth. But I'm trying to wake everyone up. 
and I don't know how to. Like, I, I'm not joking. The other day, I, I made a decision. I'm going to go buy an old Porsche. I know it sounds crazy. Ninja, the prices are, cars are expensive. I sold my tractor. I'm going to go buy an old Porsche, a 2007, like one that's almost 20 years old. Why? You want to know why? This is why. First off, I always wanted to race, and I thought it'd be great to go track it. So I was going to sell my, uh, my tractor. I sold it for 20000 bucks. I was going to go buy this used Porsche for fifteen, and you know, put a wing on it and, and, and do some modifications to it, some fun stuff with my son, make some content out of it, and try and attract people from the car industry. Um, I sat down with one of the biggest auto channels in the world, um, and uh, they had no concept. Like, their mouths were dropped. They listened for a half an hour. Uh, it was a Daily Driven Exotics, the whole team, talking about the digital currency. And, and, and they had no concept. I'm like, you're about to get smashed. You guys have what, six Lamborghinis sitting here? Those are all about to collapse in value. And said, well, the market's off. I'm like, no, you have no idea what's coming. I'm trying to reach these other genres to be able to warn people because there's only so much time that we have before the truth tellers get silenced. And I can't stop telling the truth and trying to warn people, right? So now this conversation I had with this young man today, I said, you know, we were talking about the shot and I asked the guys, I said, did any of you guys see bodies piling up? And they, no, they like, come on. You're, you, now the ninja's being an idiot because I was there on these calls. They all saw me, never wore a mask. Like guys, you have to realize what's going on. This is the plan, this is the plan, this is the plan. And now it's over, right? But now there's another thing, this ESG and this lifestyle movement that they wanna force on you. They wanna demoralize you and they wanna take your children. California is saying right now, they're trying to pass a law that you will be punished as a parent if you misgender your own child. You are, they are wanting to take away the right for you to raise your child. They want to put you in so much fear that you are afraid that you're gonna have your house. Someday, you are going to have your house taken if you speak out against them. If we don't do something now, and I am trying so hard to figure out how to reach the most amount of people. I'm not a prophet, I'm not prophetic. What I am is I'm a watchman. It's actually a, a, a title in the Bible. And certain people have the ability and uncanny, literally it's a heaven sent, and we all have a gift, every single one of you. You have, whoever's listening right now, you are listening to me, you have a gift. And right now, why when I said that, you could feel it in your spirit, like the center mass of your body. You just felt something, some tingle or something. That's the truth that just hit you. You have a gift and you haven't opened up yet and you need to figure out what it is. Because you need it not only for yourself and your prosperity and your uh eternity, but humanity needs you to start using your gift. My gift is that I have the ability to take multiple data points, put them together and put together a path and see where this is going, whether it be good times or bad. And right now it's all bad. So to the Andrews out there that say, you're full of doom and gloom, you're an idiot. Straight up. I hope that ticks you off. I hope you try and prove me wrong, prove me wrong. You know, there's about 99 people, every single video within the first, uh, when all the notifications go out, they hit the thumbs down button. They're so ticked. They're so angry. Keep it coming. Because someday, some of that 99 are going to wake up. Remember when uh, in the Bible, it talks about the flock of sheep and, and the shepherd is there watching them, but he would leave the entire flock to go after the one. Well, hopefully the 99 see that one getting rescued by the, the shepherd and understand and start to wake up to the real concept of that one. Because the one that gets rescued and pulled back into the fold usually has changed forever. So the conversation went about this. I'm gonna Google this, I'm gonna show you a photo. I said, you know, there's a, um, you know, Walmart has a machine. And if you guys go, I would dare have you uh, tag me in my Twitter feed at, at Economic Ninja or at Economy Ninja. I have two channels there, long story. Um, but I talked about a blood pressure machine in Walmart. And I said, you know, they've already set this up for the chip so you would be uh, uh, scanned uh, in your hand or your forehead. And he, he said, you know, you've said a lot of things, but this is just crazy. I said, okay. He goes, I need proof. So I just Googled a photo of it real quick. And what you'll see right here is the actual machine, right? Where you sit down, blood pressure cuff. And you see that? Look at that set up all nice and fancy there. And uh, see that little square right up where your forehead goes? Just so you know what's behind there? It's nothing, nothing. It's a piece of plexiglass, it's open area. So that a piece of electronics can go there. 
I remember watching uh, ads, and I don't remember if I could find them again. I'll have to go. I'll have to really dig and put together a video for you guys. But the, the sad thing is it will get squashed so fast your head will spin. And um, the CEO was at Verichip or one of these companies. You know, the reporters would ask them these canned questions, you know. And, and one of them would say, why the forehead? And they goes, well, what happens if you don't have a right hand? And they go, oh, that makes sense. And they go on to the next question because it was planned. They wanted you to, to go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But what happened is none of the reporters went, well, why not the left hand? And see, what's happening right now is slowly through social credit score technology, artificial intelligence, uh, video cameras. Um, I just went into an airport and there was a store which I would never frequent, not one employee. To get in, it's an Amazon store. You get in you know, to buy your, your snacks and stuff on the plane, you have to scan your credit card, and then the electronic gates allow you to come in. There's a camera there uh, checking your face and getting your facial scan and all that stuff. Then you go in and shop and you just walk right out because it just, boom, it did it for you. It scans it for you. It's all automatic. And the thing is, is, you know, what today I was warning people about a year ago, get your money out of the banks, diversify them, right? Not like go put your money under a mattress. I think that's just stupid. But um, diversify your bank accounts because there are going to be bank issues. And what you just saw was just the, the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get much, much worse in the next year. And... Um, and what they're doing is they're slowly indoctrinating you from that to you can't get all your cash out if you want it. There's withdrawal limits on your ATMs. Um, stocks, you know, get halted, specific stocks. Oh, you can't buy them right now because all the insiders are, are buying them. And then, oh, you can't sell them right now because all the insiders are selling them. We've seen this with major exchanges. Um, you know, the gamification. That's why I've never shown you guys a stock exchange and, and tried to make money from those affiliate links. Uh, FTX, I never, I turned all of those down because I knew I spoke out against them. I got mocked about it. Look at, look at the video I did on AMC. I got destroyed by uh, some people, but what people don't realize is most of those comments are from bots, a computer program that goes and attacks anyone that would speak out against these meme stocks because these hedge funds purchase those uh, uh, systems and they're out there gambling against you, stealing your money. And the fact is, I said, there's no way AMC stock is gonna survive because of the economy is hurting and there's less people in the movies. Uh, type one, if you guys have seen less people in the movies. I've gone to a movie. I've got the money to go to a movie theater. Not a lot of people do. They're staying at home. And if they did, they would go to the movies rather than stay at, go to Netflix. They would make an event of it. But no, they're going, for one movie, for one person, one ticket, I can spend uh, that and go buy Netflix, Hulu, and maybe one other subscription if I wanted to, if I got them on sale. Or for sure, two. The facts are nobody has money to go to the movie theater. And so that stock's not going to make it. And everybody that put their money in, they lost it. It's gone. That valuation's gone. And I mean, here, look at AMC. Look what they did with all that extra money when they raised, when those memes just went up. What'd they do? They raised a ton of money, diluting the stock even more, which I said, look at what they're doing. But then they went and bought a gold mine. I actually know the, the people that run that company up at the highest levels. That's, that's an interesting uh, take right there. And how's that stock done? That's the question. And what people don't understand is how all of this fits into a master plan. And that is why people need to understand that the end goal is an object, a computerized object in your hand that at, at, at any moment you will be told because you went and spoke out against the establishment that you are going to be turned off. It says in the end of the Bible, you will not be able to buy or sell without it. When you take the number that's inside that, the identification number that's inside that chip, it's divisible by 666. And just so you know, the Lord doesn't repeat himself a whole lot. In the Bible, he repeats himself when he says, and let me reiterate this, you will know this is that mark because it'll be denominatable by 666. It'll have the number 666. And people just sort of gloss over that. And we don't have a lot of time. Now, when, we, when I say you don't have a lot of time, this implementation is to take 10 plus years, 15 years to go full. But what happens is if I don't wake people up right now, they'll be lost. Because once you get enough of the bait, once they've fed you enough, you don't leave. And that's what happened with COVID. They fed you. They gave you the ability, if you don't want to pay your mortgage, if you can't pay it, you don't have to. If you can't pay your car payment, don't worry about it. And then a lot of, you know, the, the more liberal cities like Los Angeles, those idiots just kept extending it. No, oh, it's okay. You know, you're having a hard time. They want to make you homeless. They want to make you completely dependent. And it, it's very alarming. And I would be remiss, you know, it's fun to make money. It's awesome. It's awesome to succeed in life. 
it's awesome to be able to show all those people that told you you can't do something. That's my whole life. They were wrong. And do it nicely and quietly, you know, just let them see you pull up in the Porsche. Let them see you own the house. You don't got to even brag. You just to be quiet, right? That's fun. But we're talking about people's, not only lives, but salvation. And uh, what you're seeing with the current president, the past president, and everyone's going to be excited in a couple of years. Because I know what God said. He said two terms. He didn't say consecutive. He said two terms. And it would be like God to, to really throw a wrench in it. But he threw a good wrench. He said he's going to let us see the other side, their plans for us. And to say that the veil has been moved, just like at the end of Wizard of Oz, where you could just, just the, the curtain was pulled away, and you see that all of that, that you know, Emerald City was ran by a little old man, tiny man that pretty much had to stand on a box to pull these strings, like the Federal Reserve. That's why the city was green in that movie and in the book, The Emerald City was because you got to see that it was all a joke. It was all fake. And everybody had believed it. That's why the horse of a different color walked around that parade and changed colors because currencies change colors. Like whatever, what, what's the flavor of today? What's the big thing? So the reason why they want you to see Taiwan being evacuated and they're going to ramp this up over the next few days because they want you in fear and they want you getting on board. We got to go get China. Remember guys, a couple of years ago, you weren't allowed to blame China for anything because the wrong president was in. Now the bought and paid one for one is in. And so now it's all about, we gotta go to war with China. And I guarantee you the last president would not have wanted war with China because he knew how, de how destructive that's gonna be to the world's economy. And we are the ones pushing it. Think about that. I've been warning about BRICS and how important it is for people to understand this. But it is very, very important. Um, check this out. Oh yeah. Gilligan. No, I, I don't own it. That's all I'll say. I don't own it. Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't own it. Uh, it's a super chat. You know, I, I've talked about some companies that I own. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me talk about that actually. So he's asking uh, about a specific uh, stock, right? Uh, and, and I'm just going to say, I don't own it. So we'll read between the lines. Um, I've told you about companies that I, I, I own. And rarely do I do it, okay? Um, because I gotta feel real conviction. And I don't know, I've never said, hey, you should go buy this. This is a great opportunity. I'd say, this is what I do. And this goes along with those boneheaded calls. I keep track of them. And very, uh, maybe a couple of them are at or a little bit below what I bought them at. But I'm waiting to accumulate more. Uh, the ones like Outcrop Silver, I told you guys I, I bought. Um, and I think I talked about that, what, at 15 cents. I don't know what's at right now. Maybe it's at 20, but it went up to 60. And I've told you guys, every time a stock doubles, I take half off the table. I've always done that. Please understand that. This last one I just talked about, that AI robotics company, um, it's up, what, 50%. But I made a commitment because I did a paid video for the company. And as I was doing the research, I'm like, I, you know what? I just want exposure into that this market, right? And this one looks pretty sweet, so I'll, I'll try it. Everything's a risk, everything's a gamble. But I said, because I got paid, I said, my commitment is I won't sell it for a minimum of 30 days. Set it on the video, right? It's up, what, 50%. Um, people need to understand when to take profits. You should never be long-term, long-term. When, when something doubles, why you wouldn't take profits? I have always consistently lost on every investment I've ever made when I held on for the big gain. It's like when something doubles, especially in a micro cap stock, I sell off half and I go, whatever happens, if it keeps going up, which I hope it does, score, it's all gravy. If it goes down, and I still believe in it, and I'll give you an example, there was a uh, oil exploration company that I talked about in December, and I don't want to talk about it now because I don't want people rushing to it, but uh, I bought it under a private placement. I was locked up for four months, and I said, look, I bought this, I think it's a big deal. Well, it went from... 20 cents to 80 cents in the next, what, over the next like five or six months. I finally sold it on its downtrend because um, it was coming off of a bunch of news and it's in a, a, a news lull right now, the selling man go away. I sold it at 30 cents, so I made 50% on my money, but it's because I'm like, it's gonna go down more because it's in a no, news lull because of summer. And the exploration story, uh, energy exploration, oil exploration isn't the big story in Europe right now, so this stock isn't really gonna do much. And I'm waiting to buy it back and um, at lower levels. And so I'm very cautious to ever tell you about any of that stuff because I'm not a financial advisor. I only tell you about things I'm doing. 
And if you want to check them out, here's some information. Or if there's a company that pays me and keeps me on the air to do this kind of stuff and keeps my focus there, because if it's not here, I got to go work to go pay my bills, right? Like all of us. If I don't own it, I'm like, thank you so much to the sponsor. This is awesome. If I own it, I'd fully disclose that stuff. And then I also t give you guys a timeline, a legit timeline, because I don't want anybody ever seeing any kind of pump and dump. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Gil. I just can't say specifics. So Krebs, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, I would, uh, I'm not gonna be buying it. But yeah, uh, if you guys want information on companies that I, uh, go to the Silver Symposium in Vegas, like that's probably the best thing. There's some pretty awesome companies. And I know if you're really into silver stocks, I know a guy named Rob, I will introduce you to. Nancy, thank you so much for the super chat. I will introduce you to him and some pretty awesome geologists and uh, that have got pretty awesome track records. Uh, but yeah, I don't necessarily disclose things that I invest in. I talk about sectors because you all have to make your own decision, right? All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I know there's a lot of deep stuff and just a lot of explanations, but the, the, the moral of the story is that firefighter walked away with his mouth on the floor because he took the time to question what I was saying when it sounded crazy, and then he looked it up. And he said, oh my gosh, it's right here. I'm like, yeah, it's right in your face. The whole plan to ultimately get you into a microchip. And a lot of people say, and I'm telling you right now, you need to seriously question your, yourself, your life, and your spirituality. When you tell me to my face, I'll never take that chip, but you took a shot, you need to seriously look back and reflect on yourself and go, I better get in line right now and wake up to the truth and get red-pilled because, yeah, I fell for it once. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. No, it's the other way. You guys get it. All right, with that being said, I'm not trying to be funny. I just screw things up all the time. The Economic Ninja is out.